What's up, basketball fans? Back with me, Rocky Padilla. Welcome to a new episode of Stay at Home Interview. And today we have a special guest all the way from the Philippines, three times UAAP champions and three times UAAP finals MVP, 30 Ravenna. How are you doing, 30? Hey, man. Thanks, Rocky, for having me on your show, man. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. Man, I really appreciate it. We never met before. <laughs> and yeah. then I just... <laughs> I just tried my luck. I just tried my luck, uh, honestly, to DM you, and then you actually yeah. replied. I was so amazed. So thank you for your time, man, and for the interview. So let's start. How do you stay fit, man, during this crazy time? Well, I mean, uh, when it started, we actually didn't have any equipment inside the house. But as the uh, as the quarantine was getting longer, we were getting more and more equipment, so we were able to do more and more exercises with my brother and my family. So uh, yeah, I mean. We, we're just trying to make do with what we have. Um, just trying to make sure that we stay fit just for this when it ends. Um, we're not going to lose any strength, power, you know, things like that. And just make sure that we're still on top of our game when we get back. Because um, it's going to be tough, especially for everyone. And you, you want to be in the best possible condition, in the best possible shape before you, when, you, when you guys get back. Because you know it's going to be chaos when you guys, the first time going back after this. You came from an athletic family. Everybody plays sports. So did basketball come to you naturally? Well, actually, no. Uh, my first sport was actually baseball. Wow. But I actually had to, uh, because of health issues, I couldn't stay under the sun for too long um, so with something because, uh, because of something in my nose. So I had to switch to an indoor sport. And it was actually basketball, which I tried out in first, but they cut me. Because they said um, I didn't have any footwork, wow. so I had to I had to move to badminton. I actually played badminton for a year, um, just to get my footwork right because it's kind of like similar to basketball, I'm trying to make sure the timing of your feet are you know is really good. So, but badminton for a year, and then I went back to basketball, and I eventually got on the team, and the rest is history. What age did you play badminton? probably like nine or ten okay so really young yeah, yeah pretty young and then you won three straight uap championship and also finals mvp how did you stay motivated during that stretch well i mean it's hard not to stay motivated because um especially as an older uh, player in my latter years uh i just had to make sure that you know um the team was intact that we we leave a really good uh, legacy behind us seniors and we want to make sure that it lives on so uh, it's really more on that I wasn't focusing on the championship we weren't focusing on any wins we were just focusing on trying to create the best possible culture within that uh, within that team and you know as the as one of the veterans there um, we just had to lead by example and just follow whatever our coach who's coached that Baldwin who's also uh, one of the coaches in Gilas, uh, we just follow whatever his instructions are. We just learn and we, you know, we trust the process. Tell me about Coach Tap. How hard did he push you every day? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I think my relationship with Coach Tab was pretty crazy. Um, we had a lot of ups and downs, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, there would be times where he'd say that, oh, you see how... Um, you did such a great job and stuff like that, which is like 2% of the time because you never <laughs> come from it. Um, but the rest, I mean, it was, it was just like a crazy relationship where I just really wanted to learn and just wanted to make sure that I maximized whatever time I had with him. So even after the, right after the games, uh, we'll just have dinner. Uh, during the UAP, we'll have dinner and... I'll go to his house by myself at around 11 just to watch the, the existing game that we just played in the same night. And we're just going to watch it till about one or two. Just learn from all the mistakes and learn from all of the, um, the positive, uh, taking the positive and the negative things too. So, I mean, that's the kind of relationship that we had. Um, but mostly it's really him pushing me to be the best player that I could possibly be. So um, with that coach tab, I mean, he's done a lot for my career. Um, as an individual and as a team player. So um, <laughs> my relationship with Coach Tab is, you know, solid. Wow, that's, 
That's crazy. That's an amazing story. You, you watched the game right after the game. Uh, after the game, who was the take? So you recently played for the national team uh, in the FIBA Asia Cup. You scored 23 points against my team, Indonesia. <laughs> and you play alongside with your brother also. Can you describe, you know, representing the country and play alongside with your brother? Well, I mean, it's, it was tough at first, especially coming in as, you know, I wasn't really, it wasn't really my first time playing for the national team because I played back in Qatar and Kazakhstan. Um, with the men's team um, last year. But playing with my brother uh, for the first time in the national team, it's a great experience. But coming in as well as, you know, I'm, we're just one of the young guys uh, in the team and they had guys who were playing in, uh, playing professionally in the BBA. So, um, you know, it was, it was very tough at first trying to um, be professional, just like what they do. But, you know, um, Coach Tab really taught us well and he made sure, along with Coach Mark, that we did our parts. And with the guidance of the veterans in the team, um, the younger guys really had um, a better time easing in the system and making sure that um, we, we force ourselves to go to, that, to their level instead of them trying to go to our level. So it was tough at first, but gradually it became better and better and the transition became um, easier because of the help of the coaches and as well as the veterans. Did anyone from Indonesia team impress you? Um, who's the point guard? Um, is it Abraham or is it Prastawa? There's two. Prastawa is the shooter, right? The oh, one yeah, the shooter. shooter. Um, he was tough. I mean, he was taking shots people wouldn't, take, uh, wouldn't think that he would. Um, he was hitting them. He was hitting them like so casually and it was easy for him. So I was very impressed with him. And yeah, I mean, he's probably the player that stood out the most for me. I was talking trash to him the whole game. <laughs> didn't really say what did you say to him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, let's, let's leave it in the game. But, uh, you know, um, he's trying to get in his head and, you know, uh, he never said anything. So, yeah. <laughs> but people in Indonesia, everybody is wondering. How did you get that hops, man? You jumped so high. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd like to say that I work on it because I really do, but I couldn't say that it's, you know, um, it's it's all hard work because I, I mean, as much as I want to say that, genetics also plays a key, a key role. My, my father was a slam dunk champion oh. and he played for the national team in basketball in the men's team and my mom, also played volleyball in the national team. So that, <laughs> <laughs> I think it does, I mean, it has a lot of, you know, effect. That really helps though. <laughs> to which how we got our athleticism, but I also put in the work. I make sure that I put in the work, especially with my legs. I'm way tougher in my legs on my lower body than my upper body because um, I know that it's going to be a fundamental um, thing for my career. It's going to be fundamental for my career and to keep me away from injuries, you know, so things like that. So I make sure that I work on my legs a lot. <laughs> Do you have any idol in the PBA? Existing? Yes. E existing and non-existing is okay. <laughs> um, well, Jimmy Lapag was probably my, it's probably my uh, biggest PBA idol of all time. Aside from my dad, <laughs> yeah, I love Jimmy too. We are Jimmy is really good, man. He's like yeah. I saw him play. I I actually play against him. If oh, nobody really? knows, I play against him in Impact Basketball. So I used to work out at Impact also in 2006. That's when Top yeah. Impacts and actually Ateneo comes also during those times. And then oh, I yeah, this was big, against, right? against yeah. Mac Mac against yeah. uh, Jay Washington. So that oh, was yeah, a fun. That was a fun time. But Jimmy, yeah, he's a legend, though. He's a tremendous player, but even a more tremendous leader. So, you know, Coach Jimmy's he's really the guy that, like, if you have him on your team, you know you're going to be, like, you know you're, you know you're good. You get confident with guys like him and your, and your team who's really going to, who's not afraid to call anyone out, who leads by example and makes sure that um, everyone's, you know, um, attention is on the team, both on and off the court, making sure that you know everything's good from 
from an individual standpoint where he asks everyone individually and you know when everyone's together and he make, he makes sure that the whole team is glued very well so i mean that's why he's my idol so really look up to coach jimmy and then i know you want to play in an international league you receive offers from japan australia and new zealand but is the united states still an option for you <coughs> well not as of now i mean mm. um because i know Peter work. played in g league before yeah he, he played for the legends mm -hmm. but right now i mean the biggest thing probably i had was an invitation for a g league mini camp we're just having this uh the nike all asia it's not an all asia camp it's like a nike camp in the philippines mm -hmm. where like, um coaches from i think the coach dave from the used to be one of the assistant coaches in the clippers uh, saw me. I was with him back in 2013 in Guangzhou for the Nike All Asia Camp. <clears throat> but yeah, um, he he just you know, along with the help of the Nike family, he's just trying to see if he could bring me to like a four day mini camp, something like that, in the states. So I mean, it, it was just a ver verbal invitation, but you know, the the Nike guys are back with me on it. I mean, they're helping me out as well. Um, but I don't know. I don't think it's happening, especially with the situation now. So, um, you know, just trying to make do with what I have and just trying to be in shape for whatever comes my way, I guess. Let's talk about other stuff now, off the court stuff. I see that you're really big in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, just, you know, just, I just like cool stuff, I guess. I mean, <laughs> but I want to know what's your favorite street uh, streetwear brand? Um, if you know it, uh, do you know Tenement Sports? Oh yeah, I saw you with that shirt. Yeah, Tenement Sports. Uh, one of my best friends. Uh, my best friend actually mm -hmm. um, was the one who put it up, and I've been there since day one, and I've seen the growth of Tenement, and it's crazy. One of the, I'd say one of the upcoming brands locally in the country, and yeah, it's been my favorite streetwear brand ever since. So, cause I, I've been with the process, you know, I've. I've seen the growth from from the time where uh, it was only us who would wear the shirts. Then now we see random people wearing tenement shirts, like in the mall. And the first time we saw that was magical. So like, you know, things like that. It was the um, were the reasons why um, tenement's my favorite brand, my streetwear brand. Okay, and then what's your favorite all-time basketball shoes? Oh, that's tough. Basketball <laughs> shoes. Basketball. I know I saw you wear some Kobe's. Yeah, I, I'd say Kobe 5's. Kobe 5's and um, probably Kobe 8's. Okay. That's a good choice. Kobe 5's, they just come out with that, right? Yeah, they just actually came out with it. I actually had an original pair of, oh. um, I think, Batman. The black and blue, black and blue ones. Yeah. Yeah, so talking was, about Kobe, just, I just remember that you just had a webinar about the about Kobe on how he yeah. approached the game and works on his game. I forgot, but yeah. I forget to ask you, what are the things that you want to learn from Kobe Bryant, from the late Kobe Bryant? Well, I mean, there's so many things that you can learn from him, but the most I think would be his mentality and the way he approaches the game. Um, people might think that you know the things he does. Um, is, yeah, it's crazy, but mm -hmm. it's possible only if you, I mean, it's possible to do it if you have the right mentality and the right approach to how you want to play basketball because he took it um, as, uh, you know, the most important thing at that moment. So he really invested his time, effort, even money, mm -hmm. um, just like how he hired people, you know, just like Coach Mike Procopio, who was my coach in Nike All Asia as well back in 2013. He was the one that broke the video down. He was a Boston coach, but he hired him to be his individual scouting coach and trainer. So things like that really just, you know, it amazes me. And I've always been a great Kobe fan. I actually have a Kobe painting right here. Oh, wow. He's like my goat. <coughs> and, That's my goat yeah. too. Yeah. So really just the approach and the mentality, not necessarily like the moves. Because uh, I, I don't think I have the mid game. <laughs> but 
I can but, see yeah. I can see a little bit in your game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it, but yes, uh, just really how he approaches it, how he approaches things, and especially if you watch his interviews as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, he does great interviews. So yeah. And then I want to ask you, what is your favorite thing to do other than basketball? Other than basketball. Probably just play video games, go out with my friends. Uh, I like going to the beach, uh, uh, actually. Um, I like taking road trips because it really just, you know, uh, helps me ease my mind, especially when it's like a, especially when I keep doing my routine and I go like, you know, eight days straight, working out like three times a day. Kind of, you know, causes you to have like, more, not really a burnout, but, you know, it makes you kind of, yeah, well, that's kind of the term. So a trip, a quick trip to the beach, you know, would just help me ease my mind and just help me relax and make sure that everything's, you know, calm. And then I go back and do my thing. So that's probably where I spend my time outside of basketball. Thank you so much, man, for your time. That's all my worries, man. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's been a great, you know, couple minutes with you. Um, Thanks for having me in your show. I hope, you know, people watch and subscribe, yes. man. You got a lot of fans in Indonesia. So I hope I'm going to see oh, you yeah. one day to watch you live. Because when you play in Jakarta, I was in I was in New York. I was doing my pre-wedding shots. That's why I cannot come. Yeah. But I am really excited, though, to see you one day play live. Yeah, hopefully, man. Um, I just want to say thank you to... I also want to give a shout out to the Indonesian fans who give love and support. Uh, I just want to thank you all. And I just want to congratulate you in advance for your wedding. Oh, thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Oh, thanks for having me again. Yeah, man. So 30, don't forget everybody to follow 30 on Instagram. It's hard though, the handle. You tell everybody the handles. <laughs> <laughs> it's 3RD underscore E. So it's third underscore E. So make sure you follow. I'll put it I'll make sure I put it on the screen too. So, Tari, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, this Rob. once again. And say hi to your brother. Tell me, tell him I say what's up. Yes, and I'm guys, good. for everybody that watched, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next video. Peace. See you, man.